Okay. So, um, so today we have um, we have one topic. Um, uh, uh, Gita Koblenz is going to be talking about um, some proposed changes to the uh, uh, IL opcodes to, uh, uh, to to better support uh, vectors that have um, different widths and with different element sizes. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Gita and uh, let her take it away. Thank you. So page number two, uh, we'll go through a motivation, and then a discussion, and an actual proposal. So we can go to page three, my slides. So motivation, uh, they would like to support vector operations for various vector lengths, like 128, 256, 512, and po possibly bigger in the future. Um, the main goal is to exploit uh, Intel, different vector lengths on Intel, which are already available, uh, as well as possibly in the future, the like Power and Z also will have bigger size. Right now, they only have 128. Intel has 256 and 512. So this can be used for RSMD exploitation to expand our, our RSMD support um, for, for Panama projects. And um, just a comment: like we would like to be able to use um, those different sizes in one compilation. For example, RLCMD should be able to generate vector operations of different sizes. Uh, current approach what we have now is um, uh, well, we have vector types and operations, of course, uh, but 128-bit length is implicit, it's implied. Um, data types, uh, right now, describe extended data types, and they describe vector layout precisely. For example, we have type vector in 32. Since length is um, implied of 128 bit, so it means it's a vector of 128 bit wide containing four 32 bit integers. So we have full information encoded in type right now. Um, opcodes um, are what we call a typeless. For example, we add the cons. So the only thing we know about them the the vector, but we don't know uh, the content of the vector, the actual exact type. But type it can be derived. For example, when we say get type on the node, uh, we derive it from either from children, from symbol reference, or it can be cached on the node. For example, for vcons doesn't have children, doesn't have symbol reference, so type that precise type is cached on the recorded on the node itself. So this is current approach. So it has limitations, uh, since only one length, of course, only one length is supported. Um, types, as I mentioned, described precisely. So we want, if we want to add new types, new support, like from other lengths, so we would have like vector int. Um, we need to add length to it and the uh, type of elements. So the more vector length is support, the more types we're going to be adding, so essentially expanding the number of types uh, considerably. Uh, and um, typeless of codes, um, the goal of having typeless of codes was to reduce number of um, codes, uh, but um, the disadvantage is that it has some actually error prone because um, from what I described just before, uh, if no, this still under construction or being modified, the correct type can be derived. So that's the main disadvantage of that approach. Uh, so page number four. So before making proposal, I want to introduce some terminology which I think would help sort of understand what exactly we're trying to, to resolve, to, uh, to solve. Uh, so what is data? Data is basically number of bits some memory location, um, which can be interpreted in any way we want. In JIT, um, we represent data as symbol references, and symbol references have data type associated with them. Um, so complete type can be represented as like triple. It's a full size, and whether it's the integer float, and scale. For example, in most general case, like for example, 128 in 4, it means it means a vector of size 128 bit con consisting of four integers, which means each integer is 32 bit. 
So it's like full information about the type uh, with like three parameters. So just sort of like a note and a observation that generally what happens in high in languages, in high level languages, programmers describe data types precisely when they and then they specify overloaded operations. Then compilers transform overloaded operations into precise ones, like for example, adding two integers, adding two flows. Um, and then uh, as soon as the operation is present, we might not even need data uh, type you know, associated with data. Like we already know what to do with the data, so we, we put uh, all information is represented in the operation themselves. And then compiler performs different actions. Uh, like mapping stack, allocating registers, and uh, of course performing various operations like store as subtract. And sort of the question is when and which information is needed to perform those operations. Right? Um, and so operation um, uh, when we create like load stores as in zone. Um, needs full information even more than type, right? We need to do we know we need to know what kind of data we are looking at and what to do with it. So like there is another parameter like actual operation, like for example add and then a type. So well, I think it's sort of it's sort of you know obvious I think that when uh, we have a node we need to have full information like what to do with it. We need to do operation operation and data type. Everything needs to be there. Whether discussion is whether sort of what how much information we still should keep on data. Um, yeah, and just to remind like in JIT operation and the parameters are represented as nodes. Uh, nodes have opcodes and uh, that describe the actual operation. And uh, and the type is either like, you know, it's either in the opcode itself encoded or it's like we have right now this type of opcode that's represented sort of type derived from children. But we, we quickly rejected that idea of deriving type from children. So that's sort of the kind of terminology. Basically, what I'm trying to say that there is uh, data, there is uh, an operation, and uh, we need to sort of distinguish these two. And uh, in JIT, data represented a simple reference, and operation is not. So, so next to this actual discussion, so where do we keep information? Can I ask a question yeah. mm -hmm. on the previous slide? If we go back to the yeah. previous slide. There's uh, the data type was specified as 128 int 4, I, I believe was the mm -hmm. format you used. Mm -hmm. Is the int there implied to be 32 bits, right? Yes, yeah, because it's 128 divided by 4. This is there are four ints in one twenty. That was actually my question. Like, why do you need three things in that? Why do you need a triple? Because it seems that the oh, because uh, one of the three things seems to be implied by the other two. Right? No, I think they're in independent. Like int meaning like an integer float, but the integer can be size uh, you know eight bytes, four bytes. Right? They, they essentially, oh, there's a par parameter int fp kind of meaning e integer. Like a fixed point register. Okay, so int in this context is not a 32 bit. No, no, it means. Uh, it just means int or floating. Fixed point. Yeah. Okay, fixed integer. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, on page 5, so what exactly we're discussing? So, where to keep information? So, we argued that uh, data should only. We only need to. What we need to know about data? Usually just size and what the register it will be. Like six point or four point register. An operation, of course, as I mentioned, should have everything. Like operator size, and scale, complete information. So that's sort of uh, what we kind of were leaning to. And then the only question is that was really. Well, not only, but uh, one of the questions was. Uh, how to represent that information, for example, on a, on a node, like a, that op operation information on a node, right? We could just flatten it, like sort of take the product of all those combinations, or we can could split it into two, like um, the pair, like opcode and data type, to reduce the sort of number of enums. 
Red legs instead of flattening, have it all with those two things, like operation and type. Like, for example, in um, VM, it's what's called as like there's an add and then it has type. Like it has what's called add and then it says it's add. Like, vector. Like, essentially, create two parameters. But in our implementation in JIT, it would be hard to change. Like, when we create nodes, we, create, we only specify. Um, opcode, right? Uh, so we quickly decided, like, we're probably going to flatten. Um, and uh, the argument, like, um, sort of we were, like, we were um, debating because it, uh, it looked like it's actually a pretty big expansion of types, right? Like, if we take all, all, all vectors, for example, operators, operators and ties multiplied by ties, for example, if there are like add, subtract, whatever. They might support maybe like a couple dozen of vector operations. And then we have different types of vectors, like, you know, 128 bit of integers, 128 bit of uh, floats, and then the same for 256 and 512. It's, it's a big number, so that's what we're debating. debating. And plus, if we need to entertain like conversion of codes, then it's even more, and it's like all types by all types. Like square, but then um, we sort of investigated more like uh, conversion of codes. Actually, my last note on that page five uh, actually may be not an issue because um, right now we don't create like RSMB, for example, doesn't create conversion of codes, uh, so that makes it a bit better, like fewer fewer of codes then, if, you know, if you want to. Sorry, are you saying that we don't need vector conversion upcodes, or you just yeah, kind of we um, later decided like that we don't really need for Java. It's not needed right now. The way it is now, uh, we we don't need for example, RSMD never creates. Right. I guess the question was said: that Are they going to be more outside of Java? Would they be generally useful? Uh, outside of Java. Um, uh, also, for example, in static languages, there is, it happens all the time. Like, it, it's not really conversion; it's casting. Like, we, we, we there's a vector of I don't know four integers, and we want to look at it as a vector of four floats. Right. So we don't do anything; we just it's just a cast. But you need an opcode for that. Okay, so we may still need to have them. If for other languages. Part of your the, equation. Is even true between integer and floating point? Like, I would have thought that we looked at. Maybe you're just saying it's not common to have loops that you want to vectorize that are working with both integers and floating point at the same time. Well, in that case, when do you need conversion operators to be able to make uh, the data? No, only no. We can have mixed operations in one loop, but as long as we don't, there is no need to cast in one in one statement, for example. Right. Then it's okay. But we in Java there is no. So we haven't seen loops where we. Something loads an integer value and multiplies it with a floating point value, for example. That would be one scenario where you'd need the conversion operator to make it work, right? Um, how would it work? But in Java, would we have we would have I to F? Like, uh, yes. Yeah. In that case, um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, we, if you, then we need to be locked up. Okay, so we just haven't seen examples. We just don't do it. Um, yeah. I guess I would say, yeah, uh, you're right, you're right. Yeah, like if we can, if there is conversion representative in white code and we want to vectorize that loop, we just we don't do it right. right. But okay. generally, you're right, yeah. But I guess I'm saying we don't need um, sort of those casting operations that the static languages are needed. So which of these four are going to be flattened inside of the node? Uh, I'll go to proposal. Everything will be flattened. We decided to flatten, present, represent all combinations, have email for every specific operation, combination of operation, and uh, type. So I'll show an example. Mm -hmm. Basically, as I said, like it's, it's, it's much 
simpler to flatten them and uh, yeah the, this album was actually main concern like how many of chords we're going to end up with but we decided uh, at least current proposal let's go to page six current proposal is too flat so <coughs> proposal is to flatten so for example we will have like everything encoded in up code right like so it's like i standing for integer like um, 128 bit add so that would mean um, adding two scalar integers it's not vector two scalar integers then uh, i12884 it means that if you have like underscore of four it means like scale factor so it means vector and so on so once again like splitting it to two like say having like i120 for example just i add and then 128 four sort of separately it's just to not easy right now to do because um, yeah because it's just not the way we create nodes right we don't take time to add change all mode creations like just the way right now JIT works, it we concluded. So you have you have size, so it can be one, two, four, probably eight. Size they mean one to four. Um, well, like scale, like scale. How many integer like if it's vector, right? How many Sure, let's talk about a byte that's the worst case scenario. So you can have a vector register of size hundred and twenty eight, which means sixteen bytes. Right. We have one, two, four, six, eight, sixteen. So that's five variations. Then you have inter interflow. That's times two, and then times the number of opcodes, which could be twenty. So you're going to introduce hundred different nodes. So that's what right now we're proposing. Yeah. Sounds like yeah, yeah. more nodes than already. That's the reason. That's the reason for typeless opcodes. Okay. And then if you have two hundred fifty-six bit or AVX 512. Then you have another times four. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is going to grow exponentially. Yeah, thing. It's like in page three. Basically, it's a product of all the things like so operation, op operator, like uh, add, subtract, size, in floating point scale. That's, that's sort of a kind of current proposal that we can. Um, um, now the thing like. Um, uh, after long discussion, we concluded that um, a vector type is similar to an aggregate type, right? So aggregate type, we have like, for example, TR aggregate, right? Or we have like pointer type, address type, which doesn't tell us exactly what exactly it points to. Or for aggregate, it doesn't describe layout. So why would we, in a type, in TR type, why would we precisely try to precisely describe what is the layout of that? Of that type. Well, we usually we only need to know size and whether it belongs to <coughs> fixed point like inter, integer, fixed point of floating point register. Right? So, so because of that, we decided to have types like, for example, int one twenty eight or fp one twenty eight. So, for example, int one twenty eight will represent. We sort of we don't care what is inside. It can be just one integer of one twenty eight bit. Integer. Uh, we can have uh, two longs for ints, so 16 bytes. Basically, do not be kind of consistent, right? And don't try to describe the layout in the type. Type only would represent length and floating on six points. Um, but sometimes, of course, we would, I'm pretty sure, we would need to know whether it's vector, for example, is it int 128, is it one integer, or it's like four integers in one vector. So, so for, for that, we would have a field is vector inside symbol. So going back to the discussion on data and operations, so data will have um, all type represented, but not all information kind of describing the data, but not in the type, but in symbol, it will be split, like part of information in type, whether like int 128, fp 128, 64. And, uh, but whether it's vector or not, will be sort of like a modifying symbol inside symbol. 
And again, argument is that it's not that often that we need to know whether it's vaccine or not. We, we, need, we do need to know, like for example, in register location. Uh, but otherwise, we usually kill on without sites. Um, but sometimes, we, my last point on page six is that sometimes we actually need to know scale as well, but but that's, we sort of want to take minimalistic approach and see if we do we really need to. Like when we start making changes, we suspect that we don't even need to because scale is only needed when like inside evaluators. What exactly to do with that type, which instruction to use. And uh, op causes we already discussed, have all that information. It's all flat and then it is all op -codes. So we might not even need to, to know scale. Most likely not. So that's really the proposal. Yeah, any comments? I understand that concern. I, that's exactly the concern that prompted all this long discussion, the extension. But uh, alternative is only something that we already have a type of soft codes and we already have uh, Deriving from children, we, we quickly sort of discarded that because it's yeah. error prone. Having type added or known, um, it's just simply we need to like change all of to cheat, I think, all of my creation all methods from node has to be like everywhere we create node now, we would have to add the type. We shouldn't do it. For the, for the type information on the, <coughs> on the actual opcode name, is it just going to be I or F? Yeah, yeah, it's just an example. Okay. Yeah. All and right now, those are the only, okay, that's the only oh. distinction you make is the integer or float, and float could be float or double, right? Mm. But it's ah, yeah, just it's I or F. I think just F, ah, no D, right? It would be I, F, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. Which is a little bit different from what we have now. So an F with a scale of 2. Be a double or? It will be two uh, in one twenty eight would mean two doubles. Kind of odd. At least orthogonal to the way we define integers. Because we disambiguate between float and double. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's a bit of yeah, a little bit uncomfortable. Let me write down. So do you have an estimate of how many operations we have today and how many opcodes we need to introduce? We can easily calculate uh, it's quite a bit like um, opcodes may maybe right now we have maybe like a dozen opcodes. So it's like twelve multiplied by three sizes by and we did that. assuming 128 is the smallest right now. With 256, you have to introduce another 180, right? No, I already calculated three sizes, 128, 256, 512. Okay. 12 operations by three sizes, of course, we should have like, because mm -hmm. one key may be in the future. But usually they don't, don't grow at first. But right now, let's say three sizes. 128, 256, 512, uh, multiplied by, by 4 
Two by five scale. One, two, three, sixteen by six. So if this were to go ahead, um, in terms of actually how you would go about making this change, I mean, presumably you could add new opcodes to the opcode table, not a problem, but in terms of actually making all the changes to the optimizer, IL gen, code generators, that kind of thing, um, is that something that has to happen in one big bang, or is that something that can be staged at all? Uh, I guess I'm just trying to understand what the big, if there's going to be a big tsunami of code coming when, when this actually has to go in, uh, or if it can possibly be staged in some way, just to sort of lessen its mm -hmm. overall. You don't have uh, to add all the codes uh, at once. Like, for example, one just open to T first. Or then, uh, of course, first you add those new types like int um, one twenty eight, yeah, int twenty eight, fp twenty eight. So two two new types, right? two new types. Then uh, of course, of course, you have the types in the property table, the types are assigned to them. Um, then what else? Change of course, change like all evaluators, kind of reshuffle. Existing ones, point. But generally, yeah, not try to add all three sizes at once. Just for like 128, like what we have now. Sort of just transform what we have now. Because it's a new opcode, which essentially would mean more like just renaming them. It will not be even adding new ones. I don't know, of course, it'll be a new one. For example, right now it will be. Where do we keep the scale today? The scale is in the, essentially in a type, like it's, for example, we say vector int 32. So since length is implied 128, we know it's full interchange. Okay, I see. Okay. And then uh, at the same. I think sort of. I think it still has to happen simultaneously. In some places, it will be question like is vector. Sometimes they say get type is vector, so we need to redirect it instead of getting it from type. Right now, type tells us go to SimRef and check that more. Don't we know it's a but vector from the opcode? Doesn't the opcode tell you it's a vector anyway? If it's vector, but sometimes they ask simple reference. Like for example, JRA register zero. It asks like it looks like simple references and assigns registers accordingly. So right now it asks like is it vector type, but not many places. Like and then go to but that's the whole sort of I guess point that um, usually that's like when we transform that type information to operations, we quickly IL like Walker generates of course all symbolic. It creates from existing opcodes, right? Like, for example, we have like I add and we create vector add. So, at that point, we we know exactly what to create. Like, we know what it is, I, uh, this add of in, so integer to two. So, now we want to create full. So, yeah, so we don't need to look at symbol reference. And we create new opcode and then everything is fine. And only like in a couple of places, like in the register here, we need to know that it's vector without knowing what code is. So it should be that. Doesn't that that's, sorry, would it make sense as part of phasing this in to try to hide the getting the type and stride and uh, vectorness of it, mm -hmm. hide those behind the uh, Query that has access to all of the places where we might put this, so that I mean, we have. I mean, you've, you've described a proposal that we think we've settled on as a reasonable trade-off point, but this is the second such proposal for how to do this. So I guess I'm wondering if maybe now's the time to introduce an API mm -hmm. to figure out these things, so that if we 
also discover that this one isn't quite right. It's relatively easier to to rearrange where all this data is being, where the where the various pieces of information are being stored. You can create some API, like for yeah, example, like you ask type. something, what's the stride, and you give it all the things that might have a stride on it, even if we don't store the stride there right now. Right, like the node. Uh, but to be honest, I don't even sure. Like, yeah, we need to check. Yeah, possibly. But actually, stride, I don't even remember where we ask for stride. Like okay, bad example. But, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's, the, there's the, th yeah. the three pieces of data that you yeah, need to get yeah. in various places. If you hide that behind an API that has access, like you can give it a node. You can give it a symbol. Like you give it a node and a symbol mm -hmm. reference. Yeah. Hopefully, we have those in all places where we need that information. Then it doesn't matter where do we store it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just sometimes um, we discuss like like you know we get type and we if it's like symbol reference if you get it from symbol reference then of course we can incorporate we can say that vector but um, if you already go to type in some places you go to type and then later we ask is it vector you kind of need to go back and find the symbol reference. Do we have enough? I mean, but you can restructure it maybe just so that we don't have that we usually ask directly from symbol reference to the vector. So now it will go to the type monster, but in the future it will go to that modifier. So the question should be on symbol reference. All right. I and, think Mark's and that's point restructuring, was, yeah. was to abstract that abstract away that somewhere exactly, from yeah. the yeah. course so, so that in the future if you needed yeah. to get that info and it was not available on a symbol reference, <coughs> you could still call the same API. You're yeah. passing yeah. it a symbol it's reference, a node, an opcode, yeah. everything that could possibly have the answer. And then uh, somewhere in amongst all that, the answer will be picked up and yeah. returned, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But, but it's not a lot, like what I'm trying to say, just mostly removed is its vector from data type to symbol reference. That's sort of major change. That's the major change. Yeah, and so we can now restructure code and whatever we ask is vector, ask it not on data type, but sort of abstract a bit and ask it on symbol reference. And that one will decide, because symbol reference has type, right? So we can ask, go to itself or to that. That's what you mean, like sort of abstract a bit. No, I meant abstracted, so even, abstracted away from any data type. Essentially, you handed all the data, all the things that might have the answer. Not necessarily tie it to the one that currently has it, but. But it's only. But, uh, you think the. Anyways, right now it's we only think about symbol reference or data type. Unless, where else you can put it? Like, you know. So it's like, like the the permutations of the um, the stride and then the 128 versus 256, et cetera, that only seems like a handful of bits. Why can't we enlarge, like have another byte inside of a node to, to hold that? Because, yeah, yeah. Sort of, that's, that's and then you'd eliminate hundreds of, of opcodes that you would need to create. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also in every place, say for example, somewhere in the optimizer, I want to know if if two opcodes or if two nodes have the same width. What would I have to do? I have to, I have to switch over a dozen different opcodes and compare if they're 128. So how would I determine if two nodes are both 128 bit vectors? Oh, just like the way you are. The data type now. The data type I think has 128 is 128 int or something. Yeah. But then you're encoding that in the data type and in the opcode. No, size only in um, data type. Oh, sorry, in opcode, in opcode both. Yeah, yes, yes. So size. it's your double, there, there's... No, no, but the way it is now is uh, the same thing. Like we have type int32 and we have i add, which means int32 add, right? So the same thing. We have type and then we kind of duplicated in the whole code, right? right now we have uh, flattened information, right? We have... Uh, okay, sure, what about this stride, for example? If I want to turn two vectors have the same stride, I would have to switch over all the underscore, say, for example, two vector adds to find that. You mean switch by like, having a, when you need to do something then? Yeah, how would you determine that two I'll have the same stride? 
um, it's, it can be a property, you know, of course. But if you have a cool property, is it 128 bits? Okay. You're never going to get a denser coding than just adding them soft codes, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the main question is what's the con what's the bad consequence of adding a large number of off codes to the off code table? And yeah. I think the the biggest downside, which I don't personally consider to be a massive downside, is the number of static tables that are indexed by off code. Those all have to grow by the number of off codes that you've added. But I think we looked at that quickly, and it seemed like it was on the order of maybe tens of kilobytes, which probably isn't a huge deal for most publishers to have that or to have that extra data there. And it's all set up statically and doesn't change, so it doesn't necessarily like a bad thing. And then I think we need to be willing to create more queries on top of the opcode space. Uh, rather, so rather than write a bunch of code that says, is, is this node one of these opcodes, or is this opcode, or is this opcode, or is this opcode, we have to write more queries that identify the property that we're caring about and then create that as an IL property, an opcode property, so that we can query that on the, on the opcode rather than have the massive switch statement to find all the vector opcodes that match the set that I care about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, the main sort of disadvantage is just sort of entering them into all the tables of those hundreds of codes. But after that, yeah, if you create all the right properties, it's, um, sort of it's not a big burden, I guess. I think for the implementation, um, we can create a pass at some point, maybe even after optimizer, which transforms the new into the old or vice versa um, temporarily. So you add all the new opcodes, you leave the old ones there. Yeah, and then create a pass which transforms one into the other. If they're equivalent, everything should work and just step by step. Yeah. The new ones. So then that lets you transform the optimizer to pieces. Yeah. <coughs> Rather than one joint swoop. Right. And then you provide all the. So you, you leave the old opcodes yeah. in introduce all the new ones, but don't use them yet. Yeah. And then and have a pass after the optimizer at some point where you mm -hmm. transform map one to one. But optimizer, real, like I don't think it ever uses explicitly those of code code. It uses, like again, it uses properties, it uses sizes. Like, it doesn't go like, oh, use it to whatever. Back to sure, but even, even we can make even mistakes there. I'm not sure. So it's, it's not exposed. It's like any other of code. It's like, uh, you know, how often an optimizer we ask, like, is it? But model oh, synthesizer yeah. is an optimization, right? So the thing that would be normally introducing all of these opcodes? But again, through the tables, through tables, it's ask, give me a vector form of add i. It's not so <coughs> No, I would say, no, I think it's a bit more, say, like another transformation. It's not like, as I said, like we don't have a reference to them explicitly that much. Just the tables. But with me, it's just sort of you say I missed that F to I. Like then, yeah, then it's even more. Like if it support conversion, then then it's like number of types, number of all this the product like square. Yeah, I still kind of like the idea of yeah. introducing the new opcodes and still having the old opcodes there, though, because yeah. then you can you can swap over, the, like whatever table's being used to map up codes, you can swap that code over one at a time and basically ah, and test mm, each mm, one individually to make sure it's not mm. being, not broken, as opposed to everything changed <laughs> and some stuff broke. <laughs> yeah, good luck finding what it is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so you can but do it a little more incrementally that way. Because it comes down to how much yeah. you can, how hard of a challenge that is for the evaluators yeah. to deal with. I'm guessing at least for the in terms of OMR, we don't have too much testing for vector opcodes at the moment. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably have to write some trill tests for, for these guys. Yeah, we don't have a look, yeah. Some of it's exposed to shift builder, but there isn't actually a vector test. That runs right, there's, no, there's not enough testing. There's a mat mold, there is a mat mold sample that does 
vector that has vector code in it. So we try to use that, but it's only exercising, I think, about six offloads. So it's not a great, I think the it's not a comprehensive test of any. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems we had with the vector tests was that it was running on some machines that didn't support certain. There's no way in the testing framework right now to determine what the capabilities of the target that you're running on. So it just assumes, you know, I'm on Z, therefore I can use everything that I know about Z, where, whether, whether that target machine supports it or not. So that's something we have to fix in the testing framework. Which precludes wider testing of vector stuff right now. But I would recommend is the... Um, Do we, sorry, the, the open the open hardware that we have? Is, so it's not like say Xbox, so we're still subject to Travis. <laughs> we just got Windows boxes, but so we could use the Windows boxes hopefully have support, I would yeah. imagine. <laughs> Um, well, anything Intel right now should have vector support. Right, yeah, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> some, some Starting from the obvious ones, sorry. Um, I guess on the power side, but I mean, those are supposed to be power boxes, so those should have on vector support as well. And then I guess the question comes down to the no vector we support. We have, the I think, EC12. There's, there's no. Well, I think all the B community cloud machines um, should be C13. What's C13 now? Okay. Yeah, I think they should be C13, so they should have vector. Okay. Maybe we should be able to upgrade Yeah. Are, are, do we do we upgrade that, Jorian? Uh, I remember the vector tests were failing in the past. No, I think the, the when when the um, original community cloud machines were being provisioned, it was explicit that we wanted C13. Um, this was not even for our project, but just to back up the community cloud images. But we we'll need to double check. I mean, that was that was my expectation. Okay, um, maybe it's not all then, because I know the the testing it, it, issue that was prompted was because Z was failing. Um, it, it could it could be it could be um, the the DVM or whatever hypervisor we're using is not providing the. the yeah, they probably turned up a bit. Uh, <laughs> so it, it might be it might not be the hardware itself, but the the hypervisor layer. Right. Okay. Just you should double check. Okay. A little bit of something we could have changed if we asked for it. Right? But anything here, we don't have test cases. Go, drill, go. Yep. <laughs> Why we built it? Yeah. Uh, so I think your maybe the next step here is to actually create an issue in the OMR that basically describes yep. every everything that you have here, um, um, and. You know that that may invite more uh, discussion as well, but I think that's going to be ultimately the precursor for a for a pull request or a, a series of pull requests that uh, um, start to make whatever changes we want to make here. But I mean, at least just getting all this content out into an issue so that it's um, it's there. I had a question. Um, yes. Going back to the optical name itself, um, you know, looking at the, the, the slide, the I one twenty eight ad right now. Um, I mean. It, is that the point where you know there's a little bit of confusion in terms of how we interpret I? I mean, I think in this context you mentioned it was referencing it being okay, fixed yeah. point operations. Um, I mean, that one seems. I mean, uh, knowing that is. I mean, it, here is specifying that as a vector add as well. But um, you know, in this case here, I'm just adding two integers of size in 128, right? Um, uh, I mean, is there is there. Is there, I guess, my, my question here is, um, you know, instead of this model, would, would it be more intuitive if, if we went, you know, stuck with our existing types? Um, let's say for, the, you know, your second example where you have I128 add underscore four, right? Um, you know, that's adding four 32-bit integers, right? And so, um, you know, instead of actually explicitly encoding 128 directly in the op code itself, we have an I add underscore four, um, and, and that I will be treated as 32-bit integer, like the traditional way we, we interpret I's. Um, um, I, and, and you know, I, I don't know if we have an int 128 type, but uh, you know, potentially introducing that and scaling that up um, will at least make reading the opcodes perhaps more intuitive. 
Yeah, yeah, you. It sort of was just in kind of an example. You're right. Like, you're right. Like an I, like you know, like an I at underscore four of me would interpret that as integer thirty-two. You know, you know, uh, I guess four of them, right? Um, and then f at underscore four would be a a thirty-two bit float. So what yeah. if I add I one twenty-eight add four? Sorry, how, how would I just so my, my, my distinction here? My distinction here would be. You know, um, you know, with the two examples, the last two examples, right, with underscore four and underscore two, um, an alternate way would be, um, so the first one, I-128 at underscore four would be I at underscore four, and then the last one, where it's underscore two, it will be a L at underscore two. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of full um, of So you lose the 128, like, overall size, but, um, uh, but can kind of deduce that as well based on the existing types. Um, yeah, so basically what Jeremy is saying, instead of giving overall length, give it element type and how many of them. Yeah, I, I know, at least for, I was trying to think if there was like an aliasing issue that we would have with 256 or 512 length vectors. Um, no, then there will be more not, elements, there will be like... Um, right, I didn't think it through in my head, but still just... I think we'll have to introduce, yeah, we'll have to introduce that. How do you add 228-bit numbers? Mm -hmm. How do you add two one twenty eight bit numbers? Maybe partition numbers like integers. Sure, an integer. Yeah. What is? Do we don't have, have a type, type for that. that. We don't have a type for that, but. One or. That was the O type, wasn't it? O is for. Yeah, it's static. I think. Yeah. Not necessary. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We've used it in Java too. <laughs> so, so I missed a bit. Like, so why can't we have, like, uh, for example, I at the score, which would mean uh, four thirty-two bit integers, which is not twenty-eight bit, but it will be sort of derived. So, uh, what you are saying, right? Instead of I one twenty-eight, just have like forget about length overall size, but specify the type of element following our convention that you already know. Sure, I understand. So the and two scale. So the two here implies that 128 is 64 bit. But, but we, we don't have a type for a 128 bit integer of one stride. Um, yeah, we don't have it. Sorry, we don't need it. It's just sort of um, theoretically. I added it like an example. If we don't have it, we don't. We don't need it. I mean, it's a sort of. Make a Q add or something like that. Yeah. Some. Yeah. 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 I give it sort of like as an example, like to show that it can be anything. But right now, we don't suppose such integers. We don't have in future. We'll think of it. Q. I think this is something we can discuss in the issue. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I'll just uh, yeah I'll just change the example like it's uh, and I and I think that what about this proposal in German thing I think it's, uh, I like it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, use uh, yeah and it's then more, uh, like you said, it's more consistent. More consistent with what's here. Yeah. Okay. We no, might want to we might want to have something a little bit more clear than just an underscore and a number to say that the yeah. partitioned uh, operation, but. Right now we have we have V add right like I mean back, like these prefects yeah. are vector operations with V right I, I don't necessarily think we need to discard that I mean this yeah. is just the name of the opcode right so it, uh, the V will be make it explicit um, uh, but then the underscore uh, I don't know if there's value there um, in in just seeing the letter V there knowing it's a vector op but like V add Yeah, V underscore kind of stands for V, actually. Yeah, underscore in. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, it's just an example. We could have, I don't know. No, I, like, I like making the opcodes look more like the ones that we've already got. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Unless we change everything else, could be. I mean, that's kind of an LLVM like way of writing mm -hmm. the opcode. So we'll have, I don't know, like, for example, d add underscore 2.
Also, the first one is a vector, but it doesn't have an underscore. Should it no, have an underscore one? Actually, not a vector. It's not a vector. <laughs> but it's not a vector. So it's not if you don't code, have an underscore, right it doesn't exist. I just put it as an example. We really don't <laughs> need it right now. But the idea is that, um, yeah, if there is no underscore, it's just the scale is just one. So part of what we should probably describe is a slightly future-proofed set of data types, like imagining what the data types would be like for 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048. <laughs> you should probably imagine at least that far out and see how it fits together for that, that scale of types. Right? So I mean, you can imagine Q for, Q might be an obvious one for yeah, QO. No, but again, Q, I'm not sure why we need Q. Because elements, it's just an overall length, but the elements inside will be all standard ones, like the geometry. If the overall size will increase, but the number of elements will be increasing. Well, but you need it for that first off. Yeah. If you want to eliminate the 128, you need something to tell you that it's 128, which is. <laughs> But we right now don't have that first one we don't have right now. I just showed as an example in the future if we have. But we don't have, when we're going to have integers of size 128, then we'll worry about that. But right now we don't. Sure, but if you're going to transform the second guy into uh, 128, what do you do with the first one? You mean second of code? Yeah. We'll transform it into. I add underscore. And you do have 128 in, in if you talk about AVX 256. Right? You can only add. Only vectors, right? Only vectors are right now 128. There is no single integer of 128. Vectors 128, 256, 512, but even 512 inside it, it doesn't have integers inside. It just was a bad example. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't put it as well. It's kind of just to show that uh, you can have. Um, so I add underscore four would be four thirty-two bit values, which implies one twenty-eight. Yeah. That's what you're thinking. Yeah. I add f add uh, four d add two underscore two. So <coughs> first letter will be will not change unless Java introduces new type. It will not change, so it will be still the ones we have like the uh, b c l f l s t. Doesn't AVX have a 128-bit data path? Like, can't the 256 one do two 128-bit? Yeah, I thought so too. Yep. That's what you're saying. That's what you're saying. So that, yes. Mm, but Java doesn't. So we don't this is Omar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep this yeah, a bit more general than Java. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, no, I understand, but I guess I'm saying it's a bit different discussion. Like, basic type, if we get a new basic type, we'll add new letter, but right now what we're discussing how to represent combination, like vectors of those basic types. Like, if we have a 128 bit integer, I don't know if we have, I don't know which letter we do that for it. But, uh, right now we're more like discussing how to put in this. C is a 128. Yeah, like some static languages already de define the concept of 128-bit uh, primitive, right? Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I guess it is connected because there is a vector instruction that has 128-bit atomic elements. So which one may want to use? Which one may want to use? Yeah, <laughs> especially if I create a chip builder service to start adding 128-bit numbers, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> but it will not be vector type, like right? it's, it's, it's type will be that. It's not a It only appears in a vector opcode. Yeah, and it can only yeah. be in that a vector be register. A, that would be a Q add underscore 2 yeah. on 256 yeah. or underscore 4 on 512. It's not a primitive type in a general purpose register, so therefore it's a vector type, even if it is stride 1. <laughs> Well, you're hitting me with like, it's like, okay, but maybe let's separate, like, it's, let's, as I said, let's do in stages, like, let's support existing scale types. Yeah, sure. And sure, then yep. we'll think about new types. Like we're just, you yeah. just want to make sure that the scheme that we come up with is future-proofed enough for, so that we don't come back in 
you know, two years and say, oh crap, now there's one of these things, how do we deal with that? <laughs> so consider... I think just write your thoughts in, a, in an issue and then... Right. So, I mean, so for me, I mean, the way that you've written it right now, it's a 128, and that's very, I can very easily imagine how that extends to 256 bit, 1024, mm -hmm. you want to make mm -hmm. 16,000 bit numbers, I can very easily see how that nomenclature changes. If we're going to take Duran's approach, which I, I actually support, I think it's a good idea, mm -hmm. <laughs> then we max out at um, Wong's right now, and I just want to know how that extends, right? So how do I, like, what am I going to, am I going to, yeah, do I have to keep now, making up letters mm, that got it, got it, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to run out of letters? Point, yeah. But it's, I'm going to run but out of letters after derive, practical, can, like, no one's going to create 16,000 bit, I hope, <laughs> <laughs> numbers. But the two those, cases those as well. Ethereum fellows are <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm, pushing the boundaries of 2048, but, you know, there's no, there's just no, native data type. That's the other piece to kind of keep in mind that these opcodes aren't necessarily tied to having single instruction hardware implementations. It would be oh, nice yeah, if we kind of can match that. But. Mm -hmm. no, it's more like logical sort of conceptual. It's a, essentially it's a group of um, basic types. And uh, to some degree this what what I suggested uh, sort of in my in slides kind of a little bit, uh, to some degree, redundant, you know, like, how to say it, it's, um, yeah, right now, not all combinations are supported, like, we only support basic types, it's, it will never be, like, for example, I don't know, 256 underscore, because we don't have 28, basic type right now. So, not all combinations right now would be that's really, again, it's only combination of basic types of it. And uh, with your scheme, it will be more clear. Like, but yeah, this given basic type, you can have seen whatever. Okay, so we've gone past the, um, the, the, the time here. So uh, are there any more um, uh, comments or questions for, for Gita? Okay, um, so uh, like she said, she's going to be writing up these uh, um, sort of this design idea into into an issue, and I think we can carry on um, some discussion there. Um, so uh, thanks, uh, Gita, and thanks everyone for for attending, and um, we'll uh, see you again next time. Thanks, guys. <laughs>